I took a sabbatical and uh, during this sabbatical, you guys helped me understand that, okay, there's a process to this. You don't have to do this all alone. There was a little bit of vanity at play for the last few job searches because I always felt, oh, I don't need someone to help me. I, I could figure it out, right? Starting with the right, uh, the first step of trying to understand and define what is it that I'm looking for, right? Let's convert them into powerful narratives that talk to everybody about what you are as a person, what you are as a product manager, and how can you influence change and bring changes to the business and to the company. I do want to also call out mindset coaches, Ricky and Yash. Right? I think this program is nothing if you cannot put in the effort, right? I'd say it's 70% you as a person coming in and putting in the effort, grinding in, getting your mark marks done, getting that feedback, implementing that feedback. Even if it's cringe watching through your videos, I am right now working in product at Aetna, part of CVS Health. I help the prospective members of Aetna Healthcare come and find the appropriate care for them. Good afternoon, Mukund. How's everything going? Oh, hey, Sam. Everything's going great. How are you? Good. It's really great to see you. And I really appreciate you taking some time to just chat with us about your experience. I've got some questions that I wanted to walk through with you. Before we get started, for folks that are watching this and haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So my name is Mukund. I am right now working in product at Aetna, part of CVS Health. I help the prospective members of Aetna Healthcare come and find the appropriate care for them and also understand which providers are better for them and help them through their care journey, if you will. Mm -hmm. I've been a engineer who transitioned to product. Before Aetna, I worked at a couple of other companies in various product roles. And I think I want to start off by saying that the reason I went into IPM and joined the program was I was coming off of a long sabbatical, personal sabbatical, and I had intentionally, through the program, wanted to find something that's meaningful for my own journey and what I wanted to do. And uh, I was very confident in a way that IPM and IJS in a way were the right options for me because it just aligned with what I wanted to do. Awesome. Thank you for that. So we're going to rewind things a bit and talk about your experience before you joined the program, talk about your experience during the program, and then talk a little bit about your experience in the last interviews you were doing for your current role. So I guess just taking us back a few months before you joined, if you remember, what did your job search look like? What were you doing? And then also, what if you're comfortable sharing, what were some challenges and frustrations that you were experiencing? before we started working together? Um, that's a great question. So I think everybody's situations are unique, right? Each person has their own journey, if you will. For me, I've treated job search as a numbers game in the past, in the sense that I know I can convert 10 of my applications into at least three intro calls and then convert three of those intro calls into maybe one managerial round or intro round, et cetera. But what didn't work for me or what could have been better in the sense was that I was not limiting my search to what I really wanted to do. Uh, I was not being intentional. I had not defined what was I looking for in my next job. Um, my focus was all in the sense of, okay, these are the numbers. What are my conversions like? And am I moving to the next round or not? That's all it's been about. And it hasn't been more about what do I really want to do? And I think everyone has different reasons for that. For me, my own reason was I had, I needed immigration support and all of that. So for me, there was less chance to worry about, is this the right one for me? And the focus was always on getting, okay, I, I need to get to the next job. And that's what it was. So that's step one. And coming on to IPM and IJS, as I took a step back, and reviewed my own career journey, especially with product, I kind of understood why, at least in the last couple of roles, I was not entirely happy uh, or not entirely fulfilled. And I knew the reasons, right? Uh, less focus on what is it that I want to do and more focus on, okay, I'm going to go get the next thing. And that's all that matters. I took a sabbatical, an intentional sabbatical, and uh, during this sabbatical, it helped me, I helped 
A, you guys help me understand that, okay, there's a process to this. You don't have to do this all alone. And number two, we can help you define what is it that you're really looking for in the sense of what is the industry that you're interested in? What are your key specializations? What's your expertise? What do you bring to the table? And actually very methodically approach this and define what my next role is going to be and then take it forward, right? So I hadn't started my next job search until I spoke with IPM. I intentionally passed on that because I thought this time I'm going to do it the right way. This time I'm going to be intentional and and do it. Uh, I'll tell you one thing though. There was a little bit of vanity at play for the last few job searches because I always felt, oh, I don't need someone to help me. I, I could figure it out, right? Uh, and I did get those jobs, but what was missing was, but is it really what I wanted to do, uh, right? It, it maybe wasn't. So this time with, with this program, I was able to clearly define what I wanted to do, understand why this particular set of job roles motivate me, and then double in, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for walking me through that. And that's really helpful just to understand where you were and what was in your mind and how you had approached things in the past and how you wanted to do things differently or, or more intentionally. When you found our program, did you have any kind of concerns or hesitations before joining those? And what was your ultimate like decision process? And okay, let's move forward. So I've worked with Shobit in the past, so I, I do know this entire team, right? They've all been phenomenal and that they do try to help out, especially for someone in a product line. But as I mentioned, right, it was a bit of a vanity thing for me. Uh, I, I always felt super confident that I could get this, right? I don't really need someone's help. So I think it was less about how much do I feel about this program and what do I feel about this program and more about... Okay, do am I ready to go out and ask for help uh, and say that, look, I can do this alone, but I think I can do this better if I get help. So it was just like admitting that to myself that you're at the stage where you have two paths, right? You can do this alone, which is totally fine. Get, you know, where you're going, but you can also do this with a little bit of help and maybe things would be different this way. So I think that's, that was the key. Yeah, asking for help is is not easy. And so I'm wondering if we can just spend a minute on this because like, how did you decide? How did you get over that feeling of, I, in the past have done this? But yeah, you talked about these two journeys, but what is, yeah, what was your framework or what was your thinking? Because it's a tough, like getting feedback, getting coaching is not for everyone. Not everyone wants yeah. to hear yeah. what to do better and all these kinds of things. It's, it's a really big insight for folks, I think. Yeah, I think... There were two things. Number one, this general like sense of my own well-being of how I was coming out of these jobs one after the other. That was number one. You get that sense, right? More often than not, I strongly believe that you don't remember what people said to you, but you always remember how they made you feel, right? So that general sense of feeling when you walk away from these jobs, it wasn't healthy. So that was number one. I knew something had to change. And number two was this really crucial feedback from one of the interviews that went in, didn't get it, which was a while back. But what that hiring manager told me was, I think, very influential. So he, that was very kind of him, number one. So I need to thank him for that. So he said, you went in, you came in, you presented this case. It was really amazing. We thought, we all thought you were the most well-prepared person for this from a technical perspective. But the way when you're talking about your experiences and then you're translating them into these narratives, it appears that you go on for much longer than what you need to do. And for this role, with the level of seniority that we're looking at, we want someone who's who doesn't need a lot of coaching when they join. So he passed over, but he did give me incredible feedback. Of, this is what you need to do. And I think... That was the key moment for me to understand, okay, I can do this numbers game, right? But if I need to get the ones that I really want, then there has to be a very little chance of error, low margin of error. And that means going through this motions of doing the homework, 
talking to the right people, getting the right coaching and understanding who can in very objectively tell me this is too long. Make sure you're doing this again, rewrite this, et cetera. Got it. That sounds like really helpful feedback and stuff that's within your control ultimately, but it is so interesting how it creates that impression just based on that brief conversation or that set of conversations, how you might perform in the next role and kind of you are creating that inadvertent impression of, oh, we're going to have to coach this person. But if you had interviewed and presented differently, they would have been like, oh yeah, he's a senior and he's coming in with good clarity and communication and executive presence. So I'm, I'm going to switch gears a little bit to now in the program. So you're joining and you're working with us. And so I'm curious if you, if there are a couple of things that stand out to you as big aha insights around your, the program, the IJS program. Yeah, lots of things. Starting with the right, uh, the first step of trying to understand and define what is it that I'm looking for, right? The very first step of trying to define what is it that you're looking for. That was very helpful. Although I do admit, like I had the luxury of taking the time to actually define them and wait for it, but not everyone has that same luxury, right? Especially if someone is on a sabbatical. I wouldn't want to go too deep into that. But the next one was more about, okay, you now know what you're trying to do. Okay, let's take a audit of the accomplishments that you have in your career and let's pull out some meaningful and impactful stories and try to tease out more details out of it. Let's convert them into powerful narratives that talk to everybody about what you are as a person, what you are as a product manager and how can you influence change and bring changes to the business and to the company. So that whole narrative structure and then uh, tell me about yourself. Because I say, tell me about yourself. I think this was the most important thing or benefit that I've gotten out of the program because my past teammates were like a ramble of sort. I started as an engineer, a product manager, here's what I've done, et cetera. I knew that it wasn't right, but I just kept doing it. So this time, getting someone to actually look at it with the coaches to help me understand, no, do it the right way. You don't want to bore a person with all these details. That was very helpful. I remember when, because we did a bunch of work together on on the narrative piece that in point two you were talking about, and I remember talking a lot and really diving into your experiences, but how they were quite accurately describing what you had done, but not necessarily positioning you well for the next thing. And especially, and you'll talk about this I'm sure in a little bit, but like you had, you talked about your intention and your goal, and you had this big ambitious intention of switching gears and switching industries. And so you were initially like, when I remember the first versions is like one version of you. And then through all the hard work you put in or work together, but this candidate is very well suited for the next opportunity. And, and of course, and your teammate on all, all the other things that you did a ton of work on. I'm curious as you, obviously there's a lot of interviews and things like that, but I'm curious if you can share how most recent interview experience benefited from the work that you did from the, the program. I think maybe you already covered some of the elements, but just talk yeah. about that for a minute. Again, I want to start off with the team here because I think that sets off the tone for the rest of the interview. And so with this, the role that I'm in right now, there was an initial behavior with the hiring manager and then a group entry with a bunch of product folks, directors of product. And then there was another round with uh, engineering and uh, design leadership. And each, in each of these, I had the chance to start off with a team A. And I think going with the version that we collaboratively worked on and finalized was a game changer because it helps set the tone right for the rest of the conversation. Of, okay, I know about this person. I know what he brings to the table. I know what to ask next. So teammates were number one. Number two was all the behavioral interview prep that I had with these coaches who were very kind with their feedback, helping me understand when I started to ramble a little bit more, when I was off point. And, and then finally, with the peer interview sessions too, right? All those amazing peers that I had on the program who helped me understand where I was falling short and all that feedback. So those were the three things that I think were very instrumental with this particular last role interview. It's funny for folks watching this that 
you've you've spoken a couple of times about rambling and these kinds of things. And now in speaking with you now, they must like very clear, very well structured, good timing. You got your three points down, which I know <laughs> I was hammering in Rule there. Threes, right? I love yeah. it. I love it. No, but it like it's I know we talk about the job search and obviously that's the key value delivered here, but it's so nice to see how it spills over and helps benefit and, and into the role itself and into even these conversations. Like, I don't think someone would believe watching this that you had to do any kind of work around being more succinct or clear or, or having more of an executive presence or this kind of thing. So it's I just want to note that as you were talking. Thank um, you. Thank you. I, yeah, I think I want to wrap with two more questions. I would love to just hear from you because we, we say what this program is and we have kind of descriptions and, but I think it's more important for folks just to better understand what is this program in your words. So if you can share with me a bit about what you think that would say this program is and who is it for? I think this program is nothing if you cannot put in the effort, right? There's only so much you or Sam and all the amazing coaches that we have, even mindset coaches and everyone that they can do if you are not willing to put in the effort. So I think this is a, if I had to give a breakdown, I'd say it's 70% you as a person coming in and putting in the effort, grinding in, getting your mark, marks done, getting that feedback, implementing that feedback, even if it's cringe watching through your videos and understanding and reviewing, okay, why did I even do that? I shouldn't have said that. Why am I bobbing my head so much? And all of those things, right? So it's you as the candidate, 70% of your effort, that's where it's on you. And the rest of the 30%, I'd say is all this awesome structure that this program offers in terms of starting from the ground up of defining what you really wanna do, getting your narratives right, getting your team a right, and getting your thing, your resume done right, and then going in to get feedback from behavioral coaches, product design coaches, and all of these things. There's a lot that this program offers, but I, in spite of that, I would still say that's only 30%. The rest 70% is all on you. If you can come in and if you can put in the effort, you can get great value out of the program. Anything else that you wanted to share that we didn't get a chance to cover? I do want to also call out mindset coaches, Ricky and Yash, right? I know I've been talking a lot about the behavioral coaches and everybody else at the program, but I think they both were also key. I think they do really awesome stuff, helping me uncover a bit of blocks that I've had in terms of like timing or in terms of applying or in terms of making myself realize this is what I want to do versus am I trying to pursue this role for vanity or am I pursuing this role for real meaningfulness, right? All of those things. I think mindset is important. I have to admit, I would I wasn't great at sticking to my daily mindset practices, but I was very honest with myself about what I need help with and I was not hesitant to go ask for help. Awesome. That's such a that's such a huge point. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think folks look at the more tactical items, but I think as you said, the people who are successful here have put in a ton of great work, a ton of hard work, but that's not easy. And so if you're not feeling motivated or confident that you can be successful, it's just not going to go anywhere. And so I'm glad you underscored the awesome team here and all the resources and, of course, all the work that you did as well to get your mindset at a peak level. I think people don't realize that, but I think the people who have been super successful are the ones that embrace it and really go through that flow. So super appreciate you taking the time. Wish you a ton of continued success at Aetna. And I look forward to staying in touch and speaking with you soon. Likewise, Sam. Thank you so much. If you want to be one of our next success stories, make sure you book a call with us. I've left a QR code for you to scan. Go to our apply page, book time with us, and chat about your career and your journey to your dream product management role.